Hi, I'm the Bachelor Farmer Cook, and this is Prep Class. Let's talk tomatoes. There's a lot of different tomatoes in the world. Your neighbors will bring you some fresh from their garden that end up being in very weird shapes. Sometimes they're yellow. There's recipes that call for green tomatoes, which are not quite yet ripened tomatoes. But these are the two that we usually are used to seeing the most. This is a Roma, and this is a typical garden variety tomato. Um, most of the recipes that I work with, we use whatever tomatoes we have available. And in some instances, we actually want to have different colored tomatoes to make the dish have more color into it. But today, because it's prep class, let's just stick with the standards and talk about the differences in these two. Now, the Roma is a good salad variety tomato, and one of the big differences about it is that it does not have a central core like the garden variety does. Now, the garden variety is much larger. You get a, a larger yield off of the tomato, but it does have that central core, which is hard, tough, and not very flavorful, so we want to get rid of it. So the main difference in prepping is that you're going to want to core the garden variety. The Roma, you only need to take the top off of. So let's talk about the basic, basic cuts. And I'm going to start with the Roma just because the prep is so much easier. And again, as I mentioned before, we're just going to cut off that top and let that go. And I'm going to go ahead and just cut it right in half so I can show you. It seems to have a bit of a core, but not as serious as the garden variety. Now, this one, if we cut off our top, And then if we cut it down the middle, you can see this very distinct, defined, heavy white center. And that's what we're going to want to get rid of with the garden variety. So leaving the Roma aside for a moment, with the garden variety, once you get that top off, you're going to want to core it, which means you're going to want to go ahead and cut around that center, which will give you a nice couple of wedge shapes. This will not give you much of a decorative tomato, but it is still a viable tomato, so let's hang on to that. That's not a pretty salad type part of the tomato, but again, the tomato is used for so many different things in the kitchen. A lot of the garden variety you're going to be using for your sauces and whatnot. Now, the interesting thing about sauces, I had somebody ask me the other day, well, which part of the tomato do you use to make sauces with? Well, since I've got this one somewhat already cut into wedges, I'll go ahead and show you the wedge technique on these. And that's literally you cut the tomato in half, then you cut it in half again, and then you cut those halves into halves. Or if you want more of a yield, you can cut it into thirds. And I'll show you the thirds technique on the Roma. But these are going to be your salad wedges. These are the pretty little pieces that you stick inside of the salad to make it decorative on top as part of your tomatoes and, and uh, all the other ingredients that you'll put in there. Interestingly enough, wedges are also what you're going to use for your sauces because this is going to reduce and cook down as you continually cook the sauce, you'll be breaking that up. And that large pulp matter getting broken up will have the consistency of what your tomato sauce is going to be. So let's set our wedges aside. We'll save those for a salad tomorrow. And that's when you can re-save these little corner pieces off the core and toss them in there too. Everybody loves a little extra tomato. Now when we get back to our Roma, now we've cut this one in half. Now what we're going to want to do is cut this in half again. And Romas are the ones that you get really pretty wedge slices out of. And then again, we're going to cut it again to give us those quarter slices. And now you can see, because the Roma has such a less thick core in the middle, that's why it makes for a much better, better looking salad wedge. Okay, so we've done wedges. We've done cutting them in half. We've covered how the sauces work. Now, I'm going to go with the Roma again, just because, well, now let me switch up and we'll, we'll go with the large one here. And we'll show you what the slices look like. Again, we're going to take that top off of there. Now, this is the one most people are used to. 
And remember, we're just going to take our time. Don't want to be in a hurry. Now for these rings, you'll notice I'm not coring this garden variety tomato. And that's mostly because I wanted to make a point. Now these are your basic slices, and these are what you see on your hamburgers and your sandwiches. So we've covered the slicing part. Now in order to get diced, and I'm going to show you that as well, what we do is we slice the tomato, and then we're going to stack it back on top of each other, and this is where a very important technique comes into play. Now normally when you cut things, you're used to cutting forward and then cutting back again. On this one, on these tomatoes, since we're going to be dicing them, you want to just slowly push forward. So, with your knife, and remember, take your time, sharp knife, don't cut yourself. You just want to push forward and down. That way, that piece stays in position. So we're going to push forward and down. That piece stays in the position. Push forward and down and then we'll continue through. Now, very carefully, you want to spin this whole thing and keep the whole thing in one piece. And again, we're going to use that same technique, just pushing down, pushing down, pushing down. And now, that gives us the diced tomato that we're looking for. And I'll set that aside for just a moment. And on these, even this end piece, especially when you're dicing, when you're dicing, you can use everything. And I say that because diced tomatoes are also going to be either in a paste um, or in something like, say, salsa or pico de gallo. Again, we're pushing, not pulling. And that keeps everything in shape so you can get it a nice shape. And that's how you deal with your tomato, whether it be aroma or the garden variety. That's your sliced, your diced, and your wedges. Join me next time when we're going to take these diced tomatoes, and we're going to show you how to make a great Texas classic pico de gallo. And until then, remember, when you get it just a little bit wrong, especially with something like pico de gallo, just add more stuff and mix it up. We'll still eat it. So be good. Be good at it. Take care. And stay out of my cooler.